Okay. And she was a ward of the courts. She was, uh, we at that time uh, were stationed uh, at Fort MacArthur, which is Los Angeles, coming straight from Italy into the very environment that she wanted to pursue. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, again, who knows? Why would it be Los Angeles? I never wanted Sharon in the movies. And yet everything that came to Italy picked on her. A lot of films were being made in, in Italy at that time. And if they needed an extra or something, they'd call the American base, which is Pasalacqua. And then uh, Pasalacqua would get in touch with uh, Major Tate, I think it was at that time, and uh, or Sharon directly, mostly Sharon directly, because Papa probably wouldn't have given her the message. Let's bring it to the night of the murders. All right. Outside the residence, up the incline, up the hill. Yes. The gate, <clears throat> the button on the gate. Yes. The telephone pole. Right. Tex Watson says, I got on the hood of the car, 1959 yellow and white Ford. I went up the telephone pole and I cut four wires. He says before he left the Spahn Ranch that he got a Gerber jar filled with acid, snuffed it, snorted it smelled it higher than a kite all of them were yet he says he went up the telephone pole and then he says that not to open the gate because it may have set off an alarm they scaled the hill adjacent to the right as you know i've been to that residence it's a very steep hill yes it is i tried to climb that hill two weeks ago i slid down no kidding it's very hard there's nothing to grab hold and of yet he and yet he said that they were on amphetamines the uh, LSD. And the, and the acid, telephone pole things. was 16 foot high? 60 feet high. And he How climbed many? it. But How many? Whatever. Yeah, okay. And uh, it's also hanging on a cliff. There's yes, nothing on the other side of it. Yes. They went into the residence and they found uh, Wojtek asleep on the couch, Forkowski. And he awoke, dazed, sleepy. And he said, who are you? What do you want? And Tex said, shut up or I'll kill you. I want your money. They went to the back bedroom and found Abigail Folger. They brought her out there in a white nightgown. Then Susan Atkins was sent down the hallway after they had checked the premises to report to Tex Watson how many people were in the residence. She went back and found Jay Sebring and Sharon Tate on the bed having a normal platonic conversation and escorted them into the living room. They asked for money. Um, Abigail Folger gave them $75, $73. They can't remember which figure, but in the 70s. Tex Watson in his book, Will You Die For Me, says, we went there to rob them to raise $600 to get Mary Bruner out of jail, to raise bail. You and I both know that there was money left all over that place and credit yes. cards, and there was money next to Sharon's bed. Yes. What do you think the motive was? According to what I hear at the parole hearings, it was, ta it was to start a, a race war between the blacks and the whites. Helter-skelter. Helter-skelter. And uh, no one can make me believe any differently. They, they didn't go there for money. But that's what he says in his book. Well, he can, they can say anything <laughs> they want in a book. Uh, he says lots of things at the parole hearings, uh, mm -hmm. by the way, as well. Let me read to you something you've not read. Okay. You may not no, have heard. I haven't heard read any of them. From so. Susan Watkins, or uh, <laughs> Susan uh, Atkins. Yes. Quote, as Sharon pleaded for her life, mm -hmm. sitting on the couch, Susan says, it felt so good the first time I stabbed her. And when she screamed at me, it did something to me. <laughs> Sent a rice through me. I stabbed her again. I just kept stabbing her until she stopped screaming. It was just like going into nothing when the girl in the jail who became the snitch, the informant, said, like a pillow? And she said, yes, like going into air. That person had stabbed an ex-lover, so she knew what it was to stab someone. Here's what Susan Atkins finally said to the person in jail. It's like a sexual release, mm -hmm. especially when you see the blood spurting out. It's better than a climax. That was your daughter. That's right. Susan Atkins now says she's got a new religious experience. She also said she didn't kill him. That's she didn't right. kill Sharon. And she also said at the parole hearing that um, 
Mr. Uh, K, who is the prosecutor, mm -hmm. does not know who actually killed Sharon. But I can tell you who, who killed Sharon, or who was the last person she saw, okay? I, I know, psychically, okay, mm -hmm. who it was. It was Susan Atkins. Susan Atkins says that she didn't do the stabbing, yet in the, in the book, uh, The Killing of Sharon Tate, she said she couldn't do it. She told Tex to do it. Tex did it. And yet in Will You Die For Me by Tex Watson, he says that Susan did it. And it's interesting, the different chronological events and the things that happened. It was brutal. There are 11 murders they will never solve. There were screams that night from the man on the front lawn. Oh, God, please don't. Oh, God, don't, don't, don't. There was some youth group that was camping nearby that heard four gunshots. The man went out into a circular fashion to check out that canyon to see if he could find out if something was wrong. The, it was brutal because uh, Sharon was so delicate, and yes, yet she, she had 16 stab wounds, five of which were fatal. It was brutal and it was ritualistic. Are you aware that they said that they intended to dismember their bodies, but they didn't have time? They felt like their time was short? Did you know that? No, why did they feel their time was short? Uh, I, I guess because of the noise, that, huh? they kept sending someone down to the bottom of the hill for Linda Kasabian to see whether or not someone had heard the ruckus and the screaming and the yelling. Um, in Sharon's case, severe hemorrhaging. Victim was stabbed 16 times, five of which wounds were in and of themselves fatal. The last to die begging for her life, eight and a half months pregnant, and she was killed. They wrote pig out of her own blood. Yes. Susan Atkins wants to be paroled. What do you think about that? What do you think about Susan Atkins? What do I think about? Mm -hmm. The parole? The possibility. The possibility of parole? Is she a changed person? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if she's a changed person or, or they, she says she's a changed person. The fact is that she has seven counts of murder against her and you do not parole anyone who is a serial type killer.